Hi there, welcome back. I'm Eileen Wissor, and this is Seeing the World Through Trifocals. You know, I'm not sure I can count the number of times that I now find myself starting a conversation with, remember when? First of all, you need to understand this is not a sign of being old. I've heard my children say, do you remember when daddy almost got us kicked out of the basketball game for yelling down to the referee and asking if he wanted to borrow his white cane? They remember how the whole team turned around on their bench with big grins and gave him a thumbs up. Meanwhile, my memory of that same situation was trying to crawl under the bleachers because I could imagine the newspaper headlines the next day reading, seminary student evicted from high school basketball game for unsportsmanlike behavior. <laughs> like I said, sharing our I remembers isn't a sign of getting old. It's a way of keeping young. It's interesting though how some of the things we remember can change a wee bit through the years. Take my daddy, for instance. He was stationed in the Aleutian Islands during World War II and experienced an encounter with some local wildlife one time. He told us multiple times about the day he was chased by a grizzly bear. I never doubted that it happened. That was just the kind of situations he always found himself in. But you can't imagine how much bigger that bear got every time he shared the story. Or his story about when he was traveling by train through the Rocky Mountains and was standing on the outside walkway smoking a cigarette when the train did an unexpected sway and he lost his balance. He started tumbling over the rail. He grabbed the icy handrail and was hanging by his fingers when a big old sergeant happened to see him, ran up to him, and with one big jerk, pulled him back in. As Bullwinkle Moose would say, just in the ta-da nick of time. But it was exciting to hear, and I did hear it more than once. But more important, it taught me about him and about how he lived life to the fullest. It's the things that help me keep him alive in my mind. And as I continue to share his memories with my grandchildren, they know him as a person, not just a name on my genealogy chart. Of course, I don't just have my parents' and grandparents' memories. I've uh, <clears throat> managed to make some of my own. And nothing makes me happier than one of my grandchildren when they ask me to tell them what it was like when I went to school. Apparently, up until the last couple of years, where when the school bell would ring and 80 cars would line up in front of the school, along the driveway, down the street, waiting to pick up their high school students, every previous generation had to walk through two feet of snow, uphill, both ways to school and back home, and always in below freezing weather, mine included. I guess the biggest thing I've realized about making and sharing memories is it is actually the only gift we have to give our family. You see, they outgrew all the clothes I gave them. They broke the toys they got. They finished the books they were re reading. They forgot to close the gate and the new dog ran away. And the special watch we paid extra for ended up stapled to the wall. In other words, everything tangible went away. So our job as mature, sensible adults is to give our loved ones memories that will last them a lifetime. Now, how do you do that? Well, when we first moved to Texas, it was so my husband could go to seminary. We packed everything we owned along with our three kids, two cats, and one dog. Neither Bill or I had a job waiting for us, and we had enough money to survive for one and a half months. But we made the decision 
that what we had or didn't have wasn't going to impact living. Sort of like years later during the COVID period, my husband's favorite saying was, COVID may kill me, but I won't let it take my life. In other words, years earlier we decided that life is not what happens to you. It's what you make happen. That's when we discovered the way to make new memories. We discovered splorin'. We'd pile the kids in the car on Saturday morning and say, we're going splorin'. We went to festivals, city gardens, historic museums, even local factories that offered free tours. While making our memories, we learned about animals, Texas history, flowers, famous Texans, and I even found the grave in Granbury, Texas that Jesse James is supposed to be buried in. Now, just so you know, I believe it is his real grave because one of the people my daddy lived with when he was in foster care was an old uncle of his in Eureka, Missouri. He knew Jesse and all he would ever say was, there's more to the story than anyone will ever know. I'm the last to know the truth and I ain't talking. And he didn't, never. Daddy once said that he saw him chase a newspaper reporter off of his property with a shotgun and told him he needed to let Jesse live in peace. My husband and I still use this expression when we go for a ride. Let's spend the day exploring. You don't have to know for sure where you'll go, but just go exploring. You never know where the next adventure is going to be. As you know by now, my adventure usually starts with the t-shirt I pick out that morning. Go ahead, laugh at me if you want to, but life is too short to worry about matching socks and being the person who brightens up the room when they leave. Go exploring and make the day just a little better for someone else. You know, you can't outgive God. You make the world a little better for someone else, and he'll make the world a lot better for you. That person at the store with a frown or a screaming child might just need someone to give them a kind word, a smile, or a t-shirt's worth of laughter. I want a spoonful of that laughter medicine that the Bible says is the best medicine. I may not have an MD, but I do have an OPHF. You remember, I hope, that means old people having fun. And if laughter is good medicine, I plan to stay so healthy that I make it to the three-digit birthday number and help as many other folk get there as I can. Today's t-shirt actually says, enjoy yourself in your life every moment. But what it means is, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Remember, I'm here each week to give you a little push in the right direction. Tune in to Seeing the World Through Trifocals and let's go exploring. Hit subscribe, remember, it's free, and the like button so you won't miss any opportunities to see the world a little differently. Different isn't bad, it's just different. You might even discover that you too need trifocals. See you next week.